Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in. Today's video is a tale of three tapestries, or I shouldn't call them tapestries, I should probably call them wall hangings because I don't like sewing, so I did not sew a tapestry to make my tapestry, if that makes sense. So, I have said it's a tale of three tapestries because I tried one method, it failed. I tried a second method, it failed and now I'm on to my third method. As I'm recording this narration, I actually haven't finished the third one. I'm finding it really difficult because it's dark on an evening, so I'm finding it hard to actually have many hours to work in, so I'm restricted to the weekends. Um, but I am aware that this tapestry has been going on for ages because people voted on my YouTube community page um, quite a while ago to see the tapestry being made, so apologies if you've been waiting for the video. So the video footage that you can see here is actually the first tapestry. Although it failed, I thought you still might want to see it because I'm using the method called needle punching um, and I thought it might be a skill that people want to know about so I thought I'd leave it in the video anyway. So I started by making sort of a canvas for the background. I wanted it to go around the door and up the stairs so I made that shape with some scraps of fabric that I'd bought from the charity shop. This was my first mistake. I should have left this as a bigger whole piece rather than cutting it down to size and actually needle punching onto a bigger piece of fabric and then cutting it to size after doing the needle punching. But I didn't think about this and I started by stitching this lovely shape together which was quite difficult to do because I was having to patch pieces up and then it didn't quite work. But I'll show you what I mean. So when needle punching you use a piece of fabric in the background and the gaps between the threads in the fabric, I think it's called the gauze, the holes need to be tight enough together to make sure that the stitches hold as you punch through it. So this is a piece of fabric I got from the charity shop but not every piece of fabric will work. Um, I had a couple of pieces of fabric from the charity shop and I tried them all first to see if they would work so I've got a couple that didn't work. So I stitched a loop here because this was where I was going to put a pole through to hang my wall hanging and I made this little triangular end because this was going to be the bits that went down into the bottom of the stairs. So as I say, this isn't how I should have started. You can see here how much I'd had to patch up the piece of fabric. I actually couldn't have done it with a bigger piece of fabric to start with because I didn't have a piece of fabric big enough. Um, so yeah, that all contributed to my first set of mistakes. So after I had made this shape, I took off the masking tape. I used masking tape instead of pins. Um, it worked, but that was simply because my pins were upstairs and my masking tape was downstairs. That was a little bit lazy of me. But anyway, it worked, so I think I was being resourceful. So this was the bit where I was going to put the pole to hang it. And this is an example of needle punching. And for needle punching, you need to use kind of like a tapestry hoop to keep the fabric nice and taut. I decided to start with the small one. Again, this was a mistake because what I actually needed was a hoop that was bigger than the final piece of fabric. Because once I'd done the needle punching for this small area, moving the hoop on to do the next area was pretty impossible because when you needle punch, it's quite thick. So for anyone who's not done needle punching before, the needle that I've got laid on the floor there is the needle that I got in a kit. Um, and to thread the needle, I use a double dove piece of wire. I pull the wool through it so that it hangs in the loop at the end of the wire here. And then I just use the wire to push it through the needle. Without the wire, it would be impossible to thread. So I pushed the wire up from the end of the needle and through the top end. And you can see it comes out at the bottom side of the metal bit of the needle. There is a hole in the top of the needle and you need to pull the wool all the way through and then go up through the bottom of the hole and out of the top like this. And then pull the wool through and then you can take the piece of wire off. I was a little bit stuck for ideas of what to actually put as my design on my wall hanging. Um, so I decided to do some animals and this was a little fox and I'd studied some medieval drawings and noticed that the proportion of the animals were always a little bit unusual so I tried to do this kind of design this isn't how I would normally draw a fox so when needle punching you push from the top side of the fabric and down through to the bottom and for the very first stitch you just pull the thread through 
so that it comes all the way out so that the end of the thread is on the underside of the fabric. You don't need too much sticking out, probably about two or three centimeters. So I just pulled the thread back a little bit through the needle until I had two or three centimeters at the back. And then you just pull the needle out and push it back down. And you keep doing this and the fabric holds the thread in place. And you just go in a forwards motion so that the needle, the top of the needle is going forwards and it's a really speedy thing to do. Here I've spread, sped the footage up a tiny bit but not much um, and this is why I like needle punching because it is so fast to do. I much prefer it to sewing. I started by doing the outline of my little fox and then I filled in the centre. You don't have to start with the outline, um, you can do it in blocks. Now I started um, first needle punching with a kit. So the kit came in this hole punching bag and it came with a little needle and this is what I made. Now you can see that it is just simply two blocks of colour. It works a lot better when it is blocks of colour um, because it makes the design stand out more. Um, I have gathered all of my wools from the charity shop but it came with a couple of needles and it came with this handy little bag and it came with the wooden tapestry hoop so I've kept them all together and I've collected my wools and I'm actually going to take all of this to my Dunelm Knit and Stitch group to continue there. So once a month we go to Dunelm where we go to a knit and stitch group and you can take whatever you want to do and you get a free coffee, you get a free cake on your birthday weekend um, and it's really great. This isn't the shop where we do it, we do it at Dunelm but I thought I'd just show you this art and soul shop is amazing. It has all local creatives and crafters and sells all of their things. At the Dunelm knit and stitch group Group, there is this really handy recycling bin where we put things in that we don't want anymore and you can take out um, things that other people have donated so you saw there some green wool that we took so I sat with my free drink and I carried on my needle punching and had a chat I didn't get much needle punching done because I've got to admit that we did so much chatting that it took up a lot of the time. It's so good to see what other people are doing because everybody brings a real variety of things. So this isn't an advert for Dunelm, but if you live near a Dunelm, check it out because they might have a knit and stitch group running once a month. Um, I don't know if they all do or not. When you're ready to switch colours, you just snip the wool off at the back of the piece of fabric and then thread your needle again. And then once again for that first stitch, you just need to push the needle through and pull the thread out at the back so that there's about one or two centimetres of thread. And then just start needle punching again. We did a lot of chatting at the knit and stitch group so time went really fast so I brought my piece of needle punching back home where I was accompanied by my cat and I continued to add my design. Now I didn't plan the design beforehand, I probably should have done, but I was a little bit blank of ideas so I thought I would just make a start and then see how it went. You can see here I'm just switching colours so I just pull the thread through a bit, snip it off and then pull it out and then you switch colours. So earlier in the video I mentioned that it's better when you use blocks of colour. Now I haven't used blocks of colour here, I've used a mixture of colours which means that the intricacies of my design have become lost a little bit. I'm not unhappy with this because actually if you think about the scale of a well, 12th scale tapestry, so a full size tapestry reduced to 12th scale, really the stitches and the size of the thread should be a lot smaller. So I felt that as I added more and more colour, the individual stitches weren't quite so obvious, which meant that it wasn't as obvious that the scale of the stitches wasn't quite right. So you can see here that the colours are starting to merge together. Now I then had a problem because 
As you can see, I switched hoops here, but the hoop still doesn't cover all of the fabric. This is why I should have started with a much bigger piece of fabric where I didn't need to stitch right to the edges. So that's something to learn for the future. So instead, in order to get to the edges, I actually had to take it completely off the hoop. Unbelievably, it still worked. I didn't expect it to. I did have to hold it quite tightly as I punched through. Now then, over this section here, you can see it's where I patched the um, fabric together. It actually frayed as I was doing this bit, which meant that where the tummy was of the deer, the needle punched thread didn't hold in the fabric. So I had to put some more fabric behind it and then I punched through to hold it in place. This did work, but it was very fiddly. Next it was time to edge this so that you couldn't see the frayed edge and my mum came round with a bag of bits and bobs so that we could work together to do this. When I say work together, my mum absolutely brought the expertise, all I did was thread the needle for her and she did all the rest. So we had a look at what she'd brought and we decided this was a really nice piece of beading to go at the top and we decided on some gold trim to go around the edges with some piping inside. I snipped any loose threads off the back. I was very conscious of how thick this was, so with needle punching, you'll find that most of the thread is actually on the back of it. Someone did once tell me that the back should actually be the front. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but I suppose if you do some needle punching, use whichever side you wish. Um, so I snipped all of these bits off just to try and reduce the thickness of the back because I am conscious that when I hold it up in the doll's house and when I hook it up in the doll's house against the wall, it is going to protrude from the side quite a bit because it's quite thick. So a moment ago you saw that my mum was measuring out how much piping was needed. She has then put it onto this piece of silky fabric and folded the fabric over so that she can then pin the piping inside. My mum then stitched all of the piping in. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear the cat pairing, she's really happy. and then she pinned it to the edge. Again, this shows where I've made a mistake when I cut the fabric initially, because actually I cut the fabric right up to the edge, but I didn't take the needle felting right up to the edge. So it means that actually when I've then held this up and it's finished it into the doll's house, it's been slightly too small. So after pinning on the edging, my mum then hand sewed it on. So at this point we were conscious of how thick this was and we weren't sure how it was going to look when we held it up against the doll's house wall. And on top of that, we also knew that it was slightly too small. So my mum tried edging it with this red edging. However, although that made it big enough to cover the wall, it was too thick and I felt that it was just protruding far too far into the doll's house over the staircase so it was time to try a different option. So I had a look through this box of fabric remnants that I had that I'd been collecting over time and I had to think about how I could approach this wall hanging, this tapestry differently. Now I found a really nice piece of gold silk which I thought would look perfect in the doll's house in terms of its colour. And then I thought, I wonder if I could use this wool and needle felt it into the fabric to add a design that way. Now, this was an experiment, so at first I just did a little bit of needle felting to see if it would work, and it did indeed take hold. Um, so then I thought, right, I'll try and put my design on this way. So I cut my piece of silk out into the correct shape and I sewed the edges so that it wouldn't fray and then I took it to my Dunnell Knit and Stitch class because a month had now passed and we were now into the following month because I'd spent that long on the last um, tapestry or the needle punch tapestry and I tried to add the design. However, as I was adding the design, 
At no point did I feel like it was looking like a tapestry or a wall hanging and I wasn't pleased with it. So I knew I was going to have to think of more ideas. I decided to pick away at the felt to take it off the background so that I could then have a rethink. I'm sure loads of you watching are thinking, why didn't you just sew a little mini miniature tapestry with some thread and a needle? And I am also wondering the same thing right now. Um, but I wanted to try some different techniques. Not everything's going to work that I try for my doll's house, but I do want to make sure that I do everything to a high standard. So this just wasn't going to go into my doll's house. So I decided to try and take it back to the background so that I could rethink it. So as you can see, after removing the felt from the background, you could see where the um, silk had been punctured with the needle. I decided to then take a soft pastel to draw over this texture to see if this would give the impression that the image was woven into the fabric. Um, however, I didn't really like this as I went on because the rest of the silk didn't have that texture. So I took the needle and tried to make the whole bit of silk have the same texture but as I drew onto it, it just wasn't an effect that I was happy with. So at this stage I was wondering whether I should maybe just stop trying to make the tapestry because it wasn't going right. But my mum came round in the evening and she came with a beautiful piece of fabric which was a mulberry sample that she had from years and years ago just stashed away in her house and she asked if I wanted to make a tapestry out of this piece of fabric. On the one hand I was reluctant to say yes because I felt a little bit like I was cheating because I wasn't putting the design on myself. On the other hand, actually I thought it would look perfect, the colours were beautiful, they were exactly the type of colours that I wanted in my doll's house and because the fabric was woven this design was already kind of in within the threads in the fabric and it would look perfect as a miniature tapestry. So we decided to go for it and my mum very much took over at this stage because I was exhausted by the whole wall hanging tapestry making process. It had gone wrong so many times. I was so glad that she was coming round and helping me. And actually, although we haven't put the design on ourselves, the fact that mum and I have worked together on creating this means that actually it is something special to still go into the doll's house. We decided to change the design a little bit from the original and make some little loops to go over the piece of dowel which will be going to hang this wall hanging on the wall rather than having one long loop going all the way across the top. And you'll also notice that I decided to use the back of the fabric, not the front, where the colours were a little more dull. And I just did this because I felt like it suited the age of the property a little bit more. So after over a month of working on this wall hanging, I've ended up with the needle punched version which was too thick and the middle version which I gave up on quickly because it didn't look right and then the last version which I think looks the most authentic and it's special because I've made it with my mum but I do feel bad for not adding the design myself. So please do let me know what you think in the comments but please be kind because this was a real challenge and this has taken a long time to get not very far at all. Um, I will hang it up in my doll's house to show you. It will drape over the door which is why the shape is slightly different um, but thank you so much for watching and remember to hit subscribe if you've not already.